Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, I'm going to show you how to install the Zhui Shark JF100RS CPU cooler. This is going to be on the AM4 platform, but the AM4 platform and the AM5 platform are basically identical, works in the same way, so you have to remove the standard AM4 or AM5 mounting lugs in order to install this. Some other things you're going to need is a cross headed screwdriver, some thermal paste if you're not going to use the included thermal paste. And also you'll need to identify the correct mounting hardware. So for the AMD system, we're looking at the AMD bracket bag, which has four black plastic lugs and four black screws. And the mounting hardware for the brackets are the standard ones because this fits both types of sockets for AMD and also for Intel. Other things you want to do is to identify on your motherboard where exactly the connections are going to be. So if you're using just the regular fan version, not the ARGB one. All you need to do is to know where your PWM fan header is for your CPU. If you're using the addressable RGB one, you will still need the PWM CPU connection, but also you'll need to locate your three pin five volt addressable RGB header. If your motherboard only has a four pin RGB header, unfortunately this won't work, but you can still connect the fan, it's just you won't have any illumination. So with that said, let's get on with it. Right, so here's our motherboard. Processor is already installed, so we're gonna have to remove these two plastic retention modules here from the AM4 or AM5 platform. Just four screws, so just loosen those off and remove the plastic sections. Remove the plastic lugs and put them away for safekeeping. Next, we're gonna use the AM4 stroke AM5 AMD bracket bag and take out the contents. You'll notice with the plastic lugs, there are two ends, one has a wider section, one has a narrower section, which you're hopefully seeing from some B-roll. So you want to put the larger section actually on the bottom. If you try and do it the other way around, they physically won't fit. So it will only fit on one way. Rest these on top of the four pillars. Next, we want to get the AM4 brackets or AM5 brackets. So on this particular instance, you want to be using the holes here and here. If you want to, you can put the screws through like that so they're ready to go. The screw thread goes on the outer edge and you can drop the threads through and tighten those up accordingly. If you're doing this on a vertical mounted motherboard, if you leave it slightly loose, you can actually swing that out the way and then put on the plastics after to stop the AM4 backplate falling off. If you're using AM5, that shouldn't be an issue. Make sure all the screws are firmly tightened down and that is the bracket done. Next we can apply our thermal paste. So we're going to use Thermalrite TF4. Alternatively you can use the included sachet should you wish to. And apply the thermal paste however you want to. I'm just going to do a bit of a mess of a blob there but however you want to. This isn't going to be a permanent thing, so I'm just putting it on there for demonstration purposes, but that should be more than enough. If you want to, you can use the spread method and spread your paste out. That is entirely up to you. Now we can grab our CPU cooler. You're going to want to remove the fan. So unclasp that on both sides. Just pull it to release. And you can remove the fan from the CPU tower. There is actually a connection on the bottom, so you can disconnect that if you want to, to remove it in its entirety. Also make sure that you remove the protective film off the bottom of the heatsink. The actual cooler has back swept heat pipes, so you want to have that so that the furthest part back is heading towards your rear IO section over here. So in this instance, it's gonna be this way round. And what we're going to do is to line up the two screw threads on either side with the two pillars which are protruding from the bracket. Next, grab your screwdriver. And if you do some reverse turns on the screwdriver until you hear a click, so that means the thread is ready to be engaged. So you should find there is very little resistance. So just do a couple of screws to get it started. You can then spin around to the other side and do the same here. So reverse turns first, so you hear the click, and then just do a couple of turns, three turns should be enough, and then 
just do it alternately on both sides. So three turns, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and just keep going until you hit a stop. When you've got to the bottom of the threads or they've stopped spinning, then we can attach the fan to the heat sink. Be careful, there is a wire here, which runs down through this channel. So just make sure that that is actually in the channel and it's not gonna be compressed, so like so. And then hold the fan up against the tower in approximately the right position. Whilst you have it held in place, grab the clips and insert them into the side and then you can just pull back and that latches into place and then you can repeat on the other side. Just pull the clip back until it's engaged and it should click into place like so. Now we can attach the cables, so one for PWM, which is this one here. So find the PWM header on your motherboard. On this particular installation, on this ASUS board, ours is at the top here. So just connect that up at the top, and then you can manage the wires out of the way, however you see fit. For us, the addressable RGB header is at the front of the board there. So take your connection, taking notes of where the blank pin is and then push onto the connector. And that is pretty much it. That is your Shark JF100RS crystal installed and ready to go. So there you go, there is your Shark JF100RS crystal installed on your motherboard. Hopefully this video has been helpful to you. If it has, smash that like button. It's very much appreciated. And if you want to see more content like this on a daily basis, then consider hitting the subscribe button. Then you can hit the chime notification and that way you'll be notified of future video releases. If you've got any comments or questions on this video, feel free to let us know in that comments section below. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.